Um, it's a very interesting set of two startups being showcased under our session design for inclusion, uh, supported by FCDO, UK government. Under this, we have two startup founders representing their respective startups, um, Akash Deep Bansal, co-founder Icetim, and Gaurav Mittal, co-founder and CEO, gingermind.ai. And to take us through the session, we have with us Mamta Kohli, who's the Senior Development Advisor, FCDO, enabling innovation, inclusion, impact. Mamta is a development practitioner committed to gender and inclusion, Proven experience in uh, with proven experience in public policy, social impact, and in leading large multi-sector uh, programs. Over to you, Mamta. Thank you, Smita, and the ideas team. I think my uh, my video is going to play a bit strange. It's probably going to freeze because of some issue with the bandwidth, but never mind. Um, Really, so once again, thank you, Smita. Thank you, Ideas team. This is a very important session for us. Um, inclusion, accessibility, partnership, participation. There are core principles of a development partnerships. Um, and these are the principles we bring to our partnership with TIE as well. Uh, so, you know, we recognize the gap in affordable, accessible, quality, assistive solutions, assistive tech. And we also recognize a tremendous reach and network Tai has with business leaders, policymakers, startups, the investment world. And so our partnership with Tai focuses on, um, among other things, on three things, which be this particular issue, which is creating a more enabling ecosystem. Uh, we do it through investor education, inclusive events, policy influence. We use every possible event, and that's why ideas are so important for us to really talk about this, to bring the, uh, you know, the larger ecosystem more sensitive to it. The second is by building capability of startups to address accessibility as, as a core principle in their product design, services, workforce, uh, governance structure. And third is very targeted support to startups who are in this space, who are in this assistive tech space. Um, so for me personally, the most important aspect, I would say, is the universal design. And we have several examples, you know, whether it's voice recognition, SMS, captions, RAMs, electric toothbrushes, touch screens, so on and so forth, that were designed to meet a particular uh, disability or a particular gap, but it has actually made life easier for all of us. Um, and I do believe that at some point of our time in our lives, we will face or we haven't, will face disabilities. Um, so yeah, so it could be back to universal design. It may just take a little bit more R&D, a bit more time and a bit more resources. But I think it also enhances the product value. It also helps us widen the customer base. And of course, it builds a better brand image. And all of that compensates for any additional resources many, many, many times over. So today we have in this session uh, two startups that actually demonstrate what we mean and to show us how human-centric design can help build products and services that are inclusive and that also spotlight new until now probably really hidden market segment that we hadn't looked at, you know, groups that we hadn't looked at. So uh, first up, my pleasure to introduce Akash Deep Bansal from iSTEM. Um, iSTEM is a very interesting startup which empowers academic institution businesses to support students and employees with disability using technology, community, and several support services. Over to you, Akash Deep. Thank you, Amta. You are viewing. I hope I'm audible. Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Amta. Thank you, Titali, Shoglu, and FCDO team for giving me this opportunity to present iSTEM. Uh, so, uh, I'm uh, myself, Akashti Pansal. I'm a co founder at ISTA. Uh, yeah, so I would like to start with the story of my co founder, Karthik. So, Karthik is basically born, uh, born blind, uh, blind born person. He uh, He's always passionate about science and math. Uh, but when he, he, he born in India, he, he want to pursue science. And, uh, basically higher education and give high school examination and secondary school examination with the science and math. But at that time, what happens is uh, CBSC refuses him, says like, hey, you can, because you're blind, you can't allow you to appear for uh, the 10th and 12th examination with the science and math. Similar, uh, somehow he fighted with the CBSC, he, he, he don't, went under a court case, and luckily he was able to convince and uh, went through the 10th and the 12th examination. 
and he did a pretty good job there. And then a similar job, uh, similar fight started uh, when he looked at uh, what are the good uh, engineering colleges in India and what their entrances comes to look like. So he, start, he, he looked at the IIT's entrance examinations and the similar fight started again there. This is that, hey, you are blind. So you, we don't have the support system uh, to teach you. So we can't allow you. In the meanwhile, uh, what happens is like he also applied and started applying to the US top universities. And luckily, he got an opportunity uh, to uh, for an offer letter from Stanford University. He pursued his BS and MS from there. And while he was pursuing his education there, uh, he, he realized like uh, in, uh, similar to India, uh, US also has like a lot of manual processes. Uh, it's like a, uh, the support system which needs to accommodate a person with disability is not very expensive just like you need a proper support system and uh, uh, and most of even the just uh, the, the floors which is in the us is also manual so we uh, the, at the time we all joined hand together and see like hey uh, let's do something and uh, at the time we launched the stem so uh, before going into what i stem does uh, maybe some of you might be thinking like how a person with blindness uh, actually access the content and how a person with blindness may be uh, study so a uh, person with blindness can read the content uh, uh, either using the Braille or the screen reader. Screen readers are basically the text-to-speech-based software. I will give you a demo. With voiceover on, touch the screen anywhere to hear the item under your finger. FaceTime, double tap to open. Drag your finger around the screen to explore. Settings, App Store, Reminders, Mail, FaceTime. Okay, so this was a demo uh, just to show you like how the screen reader works and uh, the screen readers, uh, one blind person can access even the computer and the, uh, the mobile phones. Uh, so what is the requirement is like uh, the content should be uh, not in the graphics format because if it is a graphics, uh, this, the, the, the content can not be accessed with the screen reader. It has to be in the Unicode uh, and it has to be semantically tagged. Like uh, if you're reading a book uh, and uh, like, uh, the person want to directly read the section 3.2. Uh, but if that section is not properly semantically tagged as heading, the person with the screen reader can't directly jump to that particular section. He or she always has to start reading from the beginning. So basically, uh, there are the two main requirements of sec. Uh, the text should be in the Unicode as well as it should be semantically tagged. So, uh, the, the slide uh, talks about our vision. So our vision is to enhance access to content and information for persons with disability uh, so that they can take the, uh, the advantage of right opportunity on equal basis as others. With this vision, we started the ISTEM and we started working on our first product uh, where we started working on building the disability office management portal, uh, which has a uh, framework to uh, basically uh, manage onboarding of a student to uh, and uh, to day-to-day -day, uh, accommodation requests. Uh, it also has uh, basically some AI services to automate the day-to-day -day accommodation requests. Like uh, uh, we, were, we were working on two uh, AI services. One is the document accessibility. Another one is the audio video accessibility. So um, when I talk about AI services, so um, assume like uh, I already explained the, the document accessibility part where we, uh, we need to convert an inaccessible which is maybe in the graphics or maybe physical format or maybe not semantically tagged into an accessible format. And we're working on documents which may be containing tables, equations, uh, diagrams, multi-column. You can think of any sort of like different academic books which you might have seen. Uh, another way uh, thing is like uh, maybe some uh, the audio video accessibility where we are catching two uh, kind of disability person with blindness as well as person with hearing impairment. Uh, so person with blindness, if let's assume uh, uh, there's a person with blindness who is uh, attending this talk right now and uh, what I'm sharing on the screen, he or she can't see. So what we do is we process the video and whatever the text shown on the screen, we extract that out and, uh, and give it in a format which a blind person can easily grab. Similarly, if a person with hearing impairment and who doesn't understand the sign language, sign language is going on right now, uh, but there's no caption, who, under, who doesn't know the sign language and he, wanna, he or she wanna read the caption, there is no caption that was right now available. So we also provide an option to which someone can generate the caption and uh, basically understand what I'm talking about. So, uh, and we were working on this uh, at the time COVID-19 hits. Uh, what happens is like uh, the disability officers went into the financial crunch as well as on the other hand, the demand for the accessible digital content rise. 
So uh, what? I, uh, so we we were uh, we we were focusing more on B two B at the time. So, but due to this financial crunch, universities were not open to adopt any systems, and they were not even too uh, open to try out. So we thought, like, let's shift our gear, and for now, let's go to B two C and try out our AI services directly with uh, the person with disability. With that, we then uh, we basically uh, changed our uh, portal to for individual portals. Uh, we created two interfaces because now person with disability is directly using the portal. So we created both light mode and the dark mode. Some of you might be thinking light dark mode may be just useful for the night you know, if someone is using in the night, but it's not true. It's actually also true. Uh, it's also very helpful for person with low vision. So that's why it is very important that you should have like the both view, the dark view and the light view. Um, at the time when we was focusing on B2C, uh, we got some feedback, which is like, uh, if you're testing with B2C, you can't uh, assume that it is gonna give you the validation for B2B. So you should anyway try to go to the B2B. And also you shouldn't uh, try basically uh, doing everything in one go and then go to the market. You should uh, break out the product in a smaller chunks and build a smaller chunks and go into the market and test it out. Uh, at the time, we somehow was able to convince the universities and started getting some feedback. Uh, there are multiple feedbacks, uh, but in the interest of time, I will just uh, talk about the one, the remediation. Uh, so when we started talking about the, with the university portals, uh, so with the universities, we realized that uh, they also need the remediation flow, manual remediation flow, because whatever the, um, the AI service you build uh, right now, it is not going to be 100% accurate. At some point of time, you need some sort of manual remediation so that you can fix what are the errors done by the AI services. So we started building this uh, manual remediation uh, interface. Uh, there's some of these uh, learnings which were learned on the UX side. Um, so uh, these are uh, like uh, not only take feedback from one uh, user, one kind of users, uh, try taking feedback from all kind of stakeholders. Similarly, like uh, not, don't assume things, Just ask each and everything from the users, reduce, uh, always reducing your staff is not always because that minimizes the customization which you can provide. Uh, another thing is like flexibility with the software is like uh, uh, with the flexibility which we have is like uh, anyone can personalize uh, as per their requirements. So it's always good to give as much as freedom to the user uh, so that they can personalize according to themselves. So this is a uh, this is my team and the mentors. Uh, so we are four, and all of us have uh, different uh, kind of experience in the disability domain. And all of four of us are person with disability. Uh, these are the set of uh, partners and supporters who have supported us in past uh, during our different initiatives. In this graph, I'm just showing you. Um, uh, the whole journey which we are hoping like uh, so we started in 2019 um, uh, last year we launched our uh, beta which is public and already uh, around 200 individual users are using it and we are right now doing pilot testing with three universities in India and we are hoping uh, to grow it by 5 20 and 100. Uh, this is a, a competitor slide where I'm showing like uh, what are the different comp uh, other products, similar products available and what are the USPs. So the major USP is like we are more focusing on the scientific documents and we're also providing the manual remediation system so that uh, whatever the comps is like uh, whatever the errors is or versus those, uh, you can actually fix it. Thank you. Um, uh, for listening to me and if you're really interested in increasing the reach of your product by making it accessible to person with disability or hiring person with disability in your team please feel free to reach out to us uh, we will be very happy to help you out and thank you for listening to us i will be happy to answer any query thank you akash deep really really useful um, and I really like your insights that you brought on board vis a uh, you know, especially for me, I like that over engineering bit a lot and, you know, focusing on the rarest flow. So thank you so much. Over to you, Gaurav. Um, Gingermind. Gingermind is another interesting startup that um, established in 2015. It uses affordable technology and it uses a smartphone app uh, to facilitate navigation, movement and reading for people with visual impairment. Uh, over to you, Gagan. Gaurav, sorry. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amunta. Glad to be here. 
I am Gaurav, uh, one of the three co-founders of uh, GingerMind.ai, and we help uh, an impairment with innovative and cutting edge technology that can help them become more independent. The journey was started about uh, nine years back from today in 2012. And while I am no subject matter expert in human-centered design, I would like to share how we reached the design of our current product. And before even I tell you the product, I would like to show you how a small rebellion inside our team shaped the whole way of which direction our company took in years to come. Now, this rebellion was started by an intern which we hired in 2015. And this uh, you see over here in the screen, the rebel intern. And he's testing the product that he developed in 2015 in a record time of two months with this blind and visually impaired user in Bangalore. And let's go three years back. And most of you Back when, uh, when I started uh, this project as a hobby project, when I was still working with a company, I thought that the biggest help you can do to a visually impaired person is help them from knocking over while they are walking, right? We feel that obstacle detection and helping them walk is the biggest help that you can do to people with visually impaired. And my dear friend Akash Deep actually broke many myths that the kind of accessibility needs that people have today, they are far different from what uh, mainstream people due to their lack of interaction with this community know. And this was not different for me. In 2012, I thought that I'll make a simple glove. I'll put an Arduino over here. I'll put an ultrasonic sensor over here. And this glove will help blind and visually impaired people figure out when there are obstacles. And then eventually they can sense it through vibration two different kind of vibration and they can make their walking safe while traveling through either closed spaces or outdoors. Luckily, in just one year, this product got funded in grants by Microsoft. We built further prototypes. Then uh, I was joined in by fellow volunteers from my company. We built the second prototype and that what you see in my hand, it had an additional camera. Now, what we thought at that time was now we are able to identify obstacles. And now what we need to do is we need to identify faces of people. Because how would a visually impaired person know whom he or she is talking to? If you can somehow code the name of faces of the most prominent people around a visually impaired person, we would solve a big, big problem. Again, we got uh, one more round of grant from my company with where I was working, Citrix. And the story is just to tell that getting grants uh, or building prototypes is no way a surety of success, particularly in this space, as well as other spaces as well. Now, till 2014, I would like you to note we had zero users using our products. We had very less interaction with the community. Though we would go and show our prototype and we would get a tap on the back once in a while, it was nowhere close to the kind of uh, impact we are having today. And then in 2015, we launched this app in testing through this rebellion. Now, this guy, Hariharan, he joined the team and he was supposed to work for two months on this latest hardware prototype that we built. He asked me, Gaurav, what I want to do is I want to go and spend a day with people with vision impairment, which we allowed easily. He came back and he told me, Gaurav, you know what you should do? Just throw away everything that you have built so far. Now, you can imagine the arrogance uh, of a person who is just an intern and the audacity. I mean, we were hurt. Uh, who are you to tell us we should throw out? But we kept our calm. Of course, six years back, we were not uh, as humble as we would be today. Uh, we asked him, why do you feel so? He said that these days, smartphones are taking the main stage and anything and everything that you do, it needs to be around a smartphone. And you can solve multiple problems at once. And the biggest design, business design factor is you don't need to sell another hardware. People are adopting smartphone on their own. Also, the kind of components that you are putting in your hardware, you already have maximum those in a smartphone. 
we were somewhat convinced but then we asked what is the kind of app that you can bring out and very interestingly he said that i interviewed about five people over there and most of them were using at least four or five different kind of apps for reading or pdf or digital book they were using one for traveling they were using another for color reading many of them would have a stick that they would touch somewhere it would read color or we have a short of time please sure so so he uh, he mentioned that we can just pull up a few number of uh, apps into one single app and that's how idea first born we were able to scale to 160 countries in 70000 people in a very short time and this is how we got to our learnings through this human centric design revolution we need to co design with customer we need to adapt our product really fast and just like us we need to discard our product fast as well and the biggest learning was we need to encourage rebels within the team thank you over to you mamta thank you gaurav really fantastic especially about encouraging rebellion and and being very honest with what you discard being very dispassionate about your product and always evolving um so thank you both of you really very pointed uh, examples of what human centered design looks like and how some of these solutions can work and i also like the point you made about taking it from prototype to market and the challenges in this space especially for the sector these are some of the issues that we hope through our partnership with tai we will be able to um, to figure out to some extent with all everyone's the ecosystem's wider support and also as akash deep said as gaurav said and as i'm saying and as i'm sure the tai team will say please reach out to us if you want to work on this space or if you want any advice any guidance um any solutions or even if you just want to talk about it please do reach out to us uh, and we'll be happy to support you in whatever best way that we can uh thank you everyone and i'm sorry my video is so completely frozen um over to you smita thank you uh, thanks mamta for your support and guidance and many thanks to akash deep and gaurav for sharing uh, your startup stories with us and inspiring us wishing you both very good luck and team fcdo we look forward to your continuing support